Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Run, my friend. Run. I'm going to make a bold statement. Track and field is the number one sport at the Olympics. Now, I know that that might sound biased to you, but I'm sure that you would be equally biased if you get a chance to talk about your favorite sport. But that aside, the sporting events that we have seen on television for the last two weeks provide an opportunity for athletes to show off their skills and determination, the amount of preparation and the drive to go after gold medals. After all, the gold medal means that you are the best in the world for that event. Can you tell that I love this great festival of human endeavor? It is a great show where you see athletes striving to outdo the proverbial enemy in quest of titles and fame and an attractive medal in the process. Let us look at the first of two texts. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is a race in a great stadium. All the heroes of faith who had died are in the stands cheering, encouraging, pushing you to complete the race. What race is he talking about? Before we answer that question, look at the tremendous advice that the writer coach gives us. He said that we should get rid of excess weight. You really should not think about running with a backpack. After all, you are not going mountain climbing, and so the less clothing you have on, the better. This race is grueling, demanding, and challenging. It's the race that began the moment you got saved, the moment you became a child of God. Then he says that you should get rid of the sin, the ones that occur frequently in your life, the ones that trip you and leave you sad. You know those sins, the little ones that nobody knows of, but if you have them in your life, the writer coach says that you must get rid of those things. Have you ever noticed these athletes, how very little clothing they wear? Okay. Something occurred to me that the coach gives the instructions, but the athlete is the one who implements the instructions. As a child of God, God will not do for us what we have to do for ourselves. He will not take away the religious weights that I carry around, and he will not take away the sins in my heart. I have to do it myself in obedience to his instructions. Athletes are coached, some of them for many years, but the coach does not go out on the track with them. When they're out there by themselves, they have to choose whether to do what the coach had told them to do. Oh, the third instruction says that you should run with endurance. The longest running event is the marathon. That is run on an average two hours or more. The athlete has been training to run this race for a long time. The athlete would learn about the course, the hills and corners, the slopes and the major features along the way. The athlete needs to run the designated course, not choose a different course for himself. He is required to stick to the course. Therefore, it makes sense that the runner must be patient. It is not a sprint that ends in 10 seconds or less. It is a long, grueling course that demands much of the human body, very often running sweltering heat. Am I making sense? This journey that you and I are on that started the day when you became a child of God is a long road race. There are obstacles in our experiences. There are challenges along the way. Sometimes it seems discouraging and that is when you might come across some spectators who will cheer you on, some people God places place in your life to encourage you not to give up. Sometimes you feel weak and drained. And that is when you come across a water station. It is when God brings you to a place where you can refresh yourself in spiritual encouragement. But the race continues. If the weather changes sunny and hot to overcast skies or a drizzle, the race goes on. 
Don't you know that that is just like your spiritual race? You don't get to dictate the ideal weather conditions. You have to have the courage to keep on running when there are elements of discouragement when you come upon hardships. Oh, and by the way, your coach is not there with you every step of the way. The coach will very likely have been at the beginning of the race. And let's see if he's at the end of the race. Usually, the marathon ends in the stadium where there are many people in the stands cheering the athlete as they run into the stadium and they have one last leg of the journey. They have to run around the 400 meters track and then come to the finishing line. Which brings us to the second text. In 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, Paul the Apostle writes, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. He describes the race as a fight, and it certainly is. Your journey has been one in which you have been constantly fighting, not against people, but against Satan and his forces. You've survived. He says he has kept the faith, which means that he maintained confidence in the coach and the instructions of the coach, and in this case, the Holy Spirit, and he did what the coach told him to do. But he also says that he has finished the race. Do you know that one of the main goals in running a long distance race is less about the first, second or third place, but it is to finish the race? Many ra runners drop out. Many of God's people will give up. But Paul says of himself, he has finished the race. Ha <laughs> ha. Now it is awards time. So my friend, run, run, run to the end of the race.